I'm Kathy Peterson. Did you know that women who are going through menopause are impacted daily by unbearable symptoms? Some women are reluctant to go through hormone therapy because they don't know what the new guidelines, new perspectives, and new options are. Here to educate us on the current state of hormone therapy is Dr. Holly Thacker, director of the Women's Health Center at Cleveland Clinic Foundation. She's married and has three sons and has authored the empowering, entertaining, and educational book, Women's Health, Your Body, Your Hormones, Your Choices, a Cleveland Clinic guide. Welcome, Dr. Thacker. Hi, Kathy. Let's go back a few years, back in 2002. There were some contradictory reports about hormone therapy. What was that all about? Well, I really think that the baby boomer generation of women should be hopping mad because they've really had their menopausal experience and options somewhat negatively altered by this preventive study. It was a very scientific study, but it was unscientifically interpreted. Really? It was a preventive study. It was not a menopausal study. Ah. And it was a study of much older women, and they couldn't even really have menopausal symptoms to get in. And so there were risks, although they're basically in the rare category, even for those older women without symptoms who don't even need treatment. Right. And that's been misapplied to younger women. Yeah, and everybody has different symptoms and different issues with menopause. Some, some have extreme conditions. Some of them have very, very minimal, right? Yes, it can be very individual experience. But for younger women under age 60, for women with hysterectomies, the benefits of estrogen far, far, far outweigh the risk. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? Well, it's so ironic, back in 2002, so many women who had had a hysterectomy and were doing well on estrogen abruptly stopped mm -hmm. because they were worried about one of them. <laughs> breast cancer. And a couple years later, we got the estrogen-only report, which showed no increase in breast cancer, in fact, an actual decrease. You are kidding me. In the women who took estrogen. Wow. And, and that's why I wrote my book, because I was so alarmed by otherwise smart and savvy women seeing otherwise good doctors being told stupid things oh. about hormone therapy and the risk being exaggerated. Yeah. But one thing we did learn on a positive note is one size does not fit all. We do want to use lower doses if we can and definitely individualize therapy. That's very important. Absolutely. Because we all are different. We all have our own issues. And, 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 and one size does not fit all. And for hot flashes, which are kind of the hallmark of menopausal mm -hmm. symptoms, we have a number of FDA-approved treatments. And I like to emphasize FDA-approved. Okay. Because what happened is when this news hit, women stopped their prescription therapies, but were still having horrible symptoms. So they had to turn somewhere. So where did they turn? They turned many times to unregulated groups that were offering compounded, mixed-up therapies, mm -hmm. and they were being told, oh, no risk. Well, there's always a potential risk. The risks are very, very small. Just like there's risk in not treating your symptoms. Exactly. Or not knowing about your bone health, um, because your you vaginal take, status. Because if you don't take the, the therapy, the hormone therapy, you can risk your bone density, your blood pressure and all sorts of other different things. A symptoms. lot of different things can happen at, at menopause. So at midlife, it's a great time to kind of take stock mm. of all of your symptoms, your family history, your personal history. Right. Now, one of the risks with hormone therapy um, that is definite is the risk of blood clot. Mm. Now, it's in the relatively rare category. Okay, so and, it is rare. And certainly women who've either taken hormones, be them birth control pills or menopausal hormone therapy, uh, and have not had that problem are really at low risk. Right. But one way that we've been trying to get around that risk is there's been some recent research suggesting that the transdermals may have a lower risk of blood clot because they avoid going through the mouth and stomach and liver. Okay. And we do have some new therapies that can be individual to different doses and apply to the skin. Okay, so there are a lot of different options. Can you talk, talk through us a little bit about that? Well, we first had orals, then we moved into the patch, but a lot of times the patch doesn't stay on or maybe right. it irritates the skin. And especially in a humid area of like country. Florida. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so a lot of times it won't stay on. And so there's been gels. And, and the newest uh, gel is Diva Gel, and it comes in little foil packages. And there's three different doses. So as a physician, that's what I like because I might want to use a very low dose on a woman who's maybe older, over age 60, or as a younger woman, maybe especially a woman who's had a hysterectomy or a woman who's having horrible hot flashes, I might want to start with a higher dose. Right. So it's nice to have different options. And it just comes in little foil packages that has the exact dose uh -huh. that you just apply on the skin, on the and thigh. Just rub it in. Just a tiny bit, and it rubs in and dries just, within a minute. Oh, so that's wonderful. Kind of part of your beauty routine. Very good. Very nice we have enough. vaginal products. We have... Um, combination therapies. So certainly one size does not fit all.
If you're a woman who's had a hysterectomy, we generally just use estrogen. Okay. And estrogen does not, repeat, does not increase the risk of breast cancer. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about the risks and the benefits of hormone therapy. Well, currently, um, estrogen is the only FDA-approved therapy to treat hot flashes. Okay. We've got some alternatives on the horizon, and certainly there's a small group of women who may not be able to take estrogen, and we have some options for those women. Mm -hmm. But all the other therapies, you know, a lot of women going into their doctor's office with horrible hot flashes, can't sleep, are written a prescription for antidepressants. Oh, my goodness. And, I mean, antidepressants are fine medicines, and they do help depression, but... If but that's not the cure, is it? If you're it? not <laughs> depressed and you're having hot flashes and you can't sleep and you're having brain fog, oh, wow. I think it's an insult to be given a medicine that's not really treating the underlying symptoms. Right. And women should really educate themselves about what their options are and they should really go in and see a practitioner that focuses on menopause and really has the latest updated information. Right. And your book probably has a lot of that information yes. in it. Yes. And, and of course I've got to update it because we continue <laughs> probably every year. New, new information. And so certainly there's some websites that women can go okay. to. Okay. Can you tell us where we can go and find out more information about uh, menopausal problems and hormonal therapy? The North American Menopause Society, which is menopause.org, is an organization that's do devoted totally to menopause, which is a natural life event. Okay. And it has lots of good health information, lots of different options, as well as a list of providers that are certified menopause practitioners. Great. At the Cleveland Clinic, uh, our women's health website, clevelandclinic.org forward slash women's health, is another great site for information. And uh, information about this newest uh, low dose uh, transdermal estrogen Divigel. Okay. Their website is divigel.com. Thank you, Dr. Thacker. It was great information and great talking to you.